starts now. Today the world seems a little less chaotic, a little more reasonable, and measurably sane. Earlier today, Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th President of the United States of America. Hours prior to the ceremony, his predecessor, Donald Trump, vacated the White House and boarded a helicopter. America is a place that is virtually impossible to ignore for so many reasons. It is also a place that has served as an example for nations around the world as an industrial and commercial powerhouse, as a balance in global affairs. Four years of a Trump presidency have ended with social divisions in the U.S. more pronounced than we've experienced in at least a generation. In his final days, he presided while violent chaos consumed Capitol Hill, of all places, a surreal incident that resulted in bloodshed and death, and one that is pivotal in renewed efforts at impeachment. International institutions have been weakened, relationships have been damaged, or at best frayed, he occupied the position of president while never once seeming to respect the intent, responsibility, and awesome power that the executive office holds. Arthur Schlesinger, who, among other things, was the chief editor for the American President's series of biographies, wrote in 2004, The men in the White House expressed the ideals and the values, the frailties and the flaws of the voters who send them there. Presidents serve us as inspirations, and they also serve us warnings. They provide bad examples as well as good, the nation, the Supreme Court has said, has no right to expect that it will always have wise and humane rulers, sincerely attached to the principles of the Constitution. Wicked men, ambitious of power, with hatred of liberty and contempt of law, may fill the place once occupied by Washington and Lincoln. He wrote and published that piece, which now appears at the beginning of each presidential biography in the series, 17 years ago. While it is understandable why the world, myself included, has engaged in a collective sigh of relief, the roots of the chaos remain. The personification of that leadership is gone, but those who believed in making America great again are still there, and in big numbers to boot. It is noteworthy that Mr. Trump received 74 million votes in the November 2020 election, about 11 million more than he received in 2016. Furthermore, he increased his vote share among non-white voters, what many thought to be an unexplainable feat. His support remains. More importantly, the reason for that support remains. And this is the challenge for President Biden. Understanding those divisions, the deep-rooted frustrations and anger, the reason why Donald Trump personified the issues that propelled 74 million Americans to continue supporting him in the hope of making America great again. Among the immediate initiatives directed by executive order, President Biden fully acknowledged that his task, and perhaps his defining legacy, will be the uniting of a country, of a people divided. His presence is not only a breath of fresh air after four years of turmoil, but in this respect, it is one that embodies and inspires hope. Because while the President of the United States is the executive and chief for Americans and their institutions, that individual's reach transcends the boundaries of the USA sometimes inspiring and always making some form of an impact on nations and people around the world. It is hoped that the impact will resume a decidedly positive direction and that respect, honor, and dignity will truly be restored during performances of Hail to the Chief. Visit stephenchristiansen.ca for more episodes. This podcast is available on all premium streaming platforms including Anchor, Spotify, Amazon, Podcast Guru, and TuneIn. I'm Stephen Christiansen. Thanks for listening. A production of Stephen Christensen. Podcast complete.